I'm going to talk about uh, some fancy tricks, fun and fancy tricks for defining large numbers using ideas from mathematical logic. And I want to begin, though, by first of all giving paying a tribute to Ron Graham, uh, who was somebody very important to this community. I will always remember my conversations with Ron Graham. He was famous for many things, including a one-armed handstand, but also a number that was named after him that came up in conversation that he had with Martin Gardner about a combinatorial problem that he was working on. And I'm going to look at ways of defining large numbers that go way beyond what uh, Graham's number looks like. So suppose we have a big number game. Uh, players in this game define a positive integer, maybe describe it in a single sentence. This is problematic for a number of reasons. There could be inconsistent answers. There could be self-referential statements. Somebody could say one larger than all of the others. So we want to make this game a little bit more precise. So we say, OK, each player submits a computer code that prints a sequence of ones and then halts. And the longest sequence of ones wins. Of course, we will far exceed the length of time left in the universe with our run times. And our resources won't be able to actually print these. But let's just pretend that we can do this in a hypothetical and consistent way. So what are some good methods for defining large numbers? Well, there's Canoose up arrow, which is what Ron Graham used in order to define his number. And this is a way of using the exponential function and then iterating the exponential function, function and then iterating that again and again and again. So one up arrow is exponentiation. Two is iterated exponentiation, which we can think of as a stack of m's, where m is our first argument. And then we can iterate that. We can have stacks of m's that are stacks of m's high, that are stacks of m's high, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then we can iterate that. And that's where it gets very crazy. The fourth iteration, or four arrows, is what Graham used to define his number. But I'm going to say we can go far beyond this. Let's uh, refine the notation a little bit and use arrow sub k to denote k iterations of the arrow. And then we can do this fancy trick of having arrow sub omega be the, uh, uh, applied to m and n, be iterating the n arrow, or the arrow n times. In other words, the function arrow sub omega grabs the, R and the, the, the argument n and uses that number of arrows. This is essentially Ackerman's function, which was made famous a while back by Wilhelm Alf Ackerman. Um, but why stop there? We can extend beyond that. We can iterate Ackerman's function. We can have omega plus 1. And in fact, for any arrow sub alpha, we can iterate it and have arrow sub alpha plus 1. So we can get omega plus 2 and omega plus 3, et cetera. Well, these are the ordinal numbers, the infinite ordinals that are studied by logicians and uh, were explored quite extensively also by Georg Cantor when he came up with these ideas. These are different than the cardinal numbers, which are for counting. The ordinal numbers are for indexing. So we can think of the ordinals as an extension of the natural numbers that go into the infinite, where omega is the first infinite ordinal. And then we have omega plus 1, plus 2, et cetera. And then we limit those at omega plus omega, which we can write as omega times 2, and then add 1 to that, and add 1 again, and keep doing that. Eventually, get omega plus omega plus omega, which is omega times 3, and then omega times 4. And then take the limit of those, and we get omega times omega, and omega squared, and cubed, and omega to the omega, and omega a stack of omegas. And then we, get, we can take the limit of those, and we can have epsilon 0, which is the limit of stacks uh, n omegas high. We can keep going beyond that. We can add 1 to that and continue on beyond that. But I want to point out that this is a systematic way of using infinite numbers to define functions on the positive integers that have positive uh, outputs, and that each up arrow alpha exceeds all of the earlier functions. I'll point out that the ordinal epsilon 0 was studied extensively by Georg Cantor. And we could you know, imagine using that in the big number game. We can write a computer algorithm. That, uh, that computes the up arrow uh, epsilon 0. However, the axioms of ordinary number theory are not sufficient to prove that that algorithm terminates. And in fact, this is a well-known theorem of proof theory that the standard axioms of number theory, of arithmetic, have this bound that's defined by this ordinal epsilon 0. 
Well, if you know something about axiom systems, you know there are more powerful axiom systems than piano arithmetic, and maybe we can use those to get more powerful functions that grow even faster and define even bigger numbers. The tricks of mathematical logic, well, I'll first point out Gödel is the one who showed that these, there were these bounds, and Gensen showed that epsilon naught is the associated function. There's our tricks of mathematical logic that allow us to reach those bounds, and we can then have the version of the game where you submit your code and then you have to submit a proof of termination, and then the question comes down to, can you prove that your program is gonna terminate? So the win, whoever knows the strongest consistent axioms wins the big number game, but we can never prove it. Thank you very much. Thank you.